Hello, this is Casey from the King County Public Library here in the Genealogy and Local History Department. And we're back again with another installment of our Adventures in the Archives video series where we take a look at some of our special collections here in the department that um, a lot of patrons may not know about. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the WZIP um, Covington Radio Station collection that we have here in the library. It's not a very big collection, but this is actually a lot of fun to do some research on. Um, prior to finding this back in our archive, I really had no idea that this station existed back in the um, around late 40s, 50s, and it was really fun to learn more about the disc jockeys that work there and some of the history of the programming and some stuff that they also did throughout the community. So just to get started, I want to give you a little bit of history about the station. Um, so this is from the Northern Kentucky Encyclopedia. It has a really concise um, history of the station. WZIP, the Voice of Northern Kentucky, went on the air on October 5th, 1947. And the station has offices and studios atop the building at the southwest corner of 6th and Madison and Covington. Uh, it actually began as sort of a competition between um, a couple of local groups that wanted a radio station in Covington, and ZIP won out. Um, the group consisted of Arthur Eilerman, Gregory Hughes, and Charles Top Miller. Um, the Eilerman family was actually already pretty well known in Covington as they owned a clothing shop um, off on Pike Street. Uh, WZIP um, really supported the community in a lot of different ways, um, whether that was through their on-air programming, interviews with community members, um, public officials, educators, entertainers, sports teams, anyone that was local to the area they wanted to get involved in the station. Um, they also featured um, a lot of different music that other stations at the time didn't really play. Um, they had their first um, African-American disc jockey, Ernie Waits, um, play music on the station as well. There was some religious programming, including um, Temple of Israel off on Scott Street, so that was very unusual for the time to have a rabbi have religious um, Jewish programming on a station as well. Um, they also played a lot of different music that wasn't found in other areas, such as you know jazz, blues, um, hillbilly music, which an actual term for the country music during that time is not uh, a bad thing. That's just sort of what it was referred to as. Um, in researching this, I also found there was um, a female country um, disc jockey that also um, played music, the hillbilly music on WZIP named Inez Hellman, but she also used um, a sort of a um, stage name, I suppose, um, Connie Hall, and she was a country singer herself and actually performed at the um, Grand Ole Opry, so that was kind of interesting to find that out as well. Um, so the main um, station head, Arthur Eilerman, graduated in 1929 from the University of Cincinnati and then later attended New York University. Um, his wife, Carmen, was also a co-owner of the station and was one of the most well-known um, disc jockeys in the area as um, during her time working at the station. So uh, just to get started a little bit on the actual material here in the collection, um, we actually have a pretty sizable collection of photos in um, our little collection of ZIP, um, WZIP material. Um, here's Carmen here interviewing on air, and then everyone at the station in this photograph as well. I looked on our photo database, Faces and Places, and we have quite a few of the photos already uploaded from the collection, but there are a couple like these two that haven't been uploaded yet, so I'm definitely looking into getting all the photographs um, up on the database for other people to take a look at. Um, mentioning some of the stuff that they were involved with um, in the community, they did a lot of um, fundraising for children during war times. Um, this just says Italian Korean war children are beneficiaries of foster parent program at Covington Station. So I think um, this little boy here, there's a lot of correspondence between um, him and his family with um, Carmen and Arthur um, in the collection as well. I think he was from Korea, I believe, and this um, little girl is from Italy. So they did a lot of stuff like that, raising money for um, charities. I know Carmen was really involved with a lot of local charities um, for kids in the Covington area. So they did a lot of stuff like that for the community. 
Uh, this is just kind of an interesting certificate of appreciation from the Covington Chamber of Commerce. There's a lot of uh, promotional um, stuff in the collection as well, materials like that. There's a big folder of material pertaining to their annual picnic that they put on, and that's kind of interesting too. A lot of um, listing of names of local people, so that would also be a really good genealogy resource as well. Resource as well. I really like this um, little book here, The Greater Cincinnati. It's WZIP 1050, the station number. Um, a lot of the material that I found ab about some different people that work there is in this book. Um, so it's really kind of a neat resource for people that work at the station. And it has a pretty good history of when it started um, back in the 1940s. So that was kind of fun to look at. Um, lastly, there's a lot of correspondence between Carmen and some other um, station owners, station um, owners throughout the country that she talked with and got ideas for programming and things like that. And just kind of really fun to see her interactions and friendships with, with other people. But this particular letter that I found is from um, a radio station out in Missouri. And the station head writes to her and mentions something about them owning parakeets and how this is like a new hobby for her. He was really interested in how many she had at that point. So I did some research through the um, Kentucky Post database and I found out that apparently um, Carmen, Arthur, and her son Chuck, during that time period, um, they were sort of interested in parakeets and birds, raising them. I know um, Carmen, according to this Kentucky Post letter, sent some birds out to um, St. Elizabeth Hospital to sort of cheer up patients and they ended up kind of making that a big hobby for their family. I believe they had over about 200 birds at one point and had someone that was an actual expert in this come to their home and sort of look at the birds and see what would be best for breeding. So um, a lot of the correspondence mentions, you know, some kind of silly stuff like that or just interesting um, sort of things about their lives. So I really love looking at correspondence like that to get not only a feel for what their jobs were like, but what their lives were like as well during that time period. So that is just a little bit of a background on what the collection has, a lot of photographs and correspondence. Um, again, I really didn't know a lot about this collection, but it was really fun to learn more about um, the station here in Covington back in the 40s. So that is about it for this video. Um, check back in this channel again for another installment of the Adventures in the Archive series.